Hi, this is Tyler McGraw, and I'm a consultant with Yellowfin. And I'm Nathan Schrader on the Yellowfin support staff. Nathan, welcome to our monthly podcast. Thank you. As you know, we try and highlight a feature inside of Yellowfin once a month, review some data. And this month, we're talking about the Super Bowl. Did you have a chance to watch the game? I did. Wow. It was, oh, it was it, amazing. <laughs> by the first half, I was like, oh, no, this is this is a bad thing. I was ready to go. Exactly. <laughs> I'm glad I stayed tuned. That was an amazing game. So I asked you to analyze some numbers around the 2016 season for the Patriots and Atlanta and use Yellowfin to gain some insight into how those teams performed in the Super Bowl. So let's kind of go through what you uh, what you did. Yeah, there's a ton of football data out there. So I went to various sites like ProFootballReference.com and NFL Savant, who both of them offer free CSVs for download. And I yeah, went, and I should just say at this moment that we're not affiliated with the NFL, so nope. please don't send us a cease and desist <laughs> letter. This is publicly available information. Yeah, carry on. The first thing I really wanted to see was who are these teams? What kind of teams are they in terms of stats? So I went out and gathered the most general stats I could find. What we could really see here is that both of these teams are high-powered offenses. Number one and number two in points. Number two and number three in passing yards. Number two and number four in first downs. Both of these teams are very strong offensive teams. Yeah, we, we were expecting a shootout. Uh, and I know that at least we did see a shootout, but just not at the same time, right? It was like a take, take turns <laughs> shootout. But yeah, so, so in your estimation, uh, according to the 2016 stats, we saw the right two teams. In the final, match. if you wanted to see a good passing offensive teams, yes, these were the two best teams you could find. Yeah. What about what about on the other side of the ball, on the defensive side of the ball? The other side of the ball, we start seeing a little bit more parity here. We can see both of these teams are very similar offenses. But when it comes to defense, this is really where New England starts to shine. Yeah. They were number one in points allowed. They were number five in rushing yards allowed. Whereas the Falcons, they were more in the mid twenty range. Yeah, they were they were very average, or they they were supposed to be very average on the defensive side of the ball, although they had a great defense and a great defensive scheme that just got better and I think will get better and better. That first quarter, though, is probably some of the best defense I've ever seen played. I mean, they knew what was going to happen. Oh, Patriots couldn't do anything. Yeah, yeah, it was ridiculous. But, uh, you know, Bill Belichick, you talk about him and, and his defensive setup, uh, you know he's going to have a, a really good a balanced team between that. So you mentioned that these are two teams that like to pass the ball. How does the run pass break out then in the 2016 season? So I went and I grabbed play by play data to look at this and they designate each play as a pass run sack, etc. Yeah, so this is play by play for the 2016 season through those in the database, pulling some cracks back. So we can see from this, both of these teams very heavily prefer the pass play. They mix a bit of rush in there as well, but, but 550 wow. pass yards for the Patriots. That's pass attempts, right? Pass That's attempts, plans. excuse Those me. Are plays, 526 yeah. pass attempts for the Falcons. Yeah. Both of these teams love to throw. Well, and you're, you know, that makes sense, too, because they'd have two great quarterbacks. Matt Ryan, MVP for 2016. Tom Brady probably going to be in the Hall of Fame sometime down the road. For but, sure. Yeah. Uh, that's interesting. So what I'm seeing now for average yards is the sum of all their offense, right? They're averaging. So Patriots are averaging almost six yards per offensive play. Atlanta really two almost two yards more per play. That's really what they're doing. Yep, wow. yeah. seven yards, amazing. All right, so uh, does this yield an insight? And first of all, let me just compliment you on the color choice, right? So I <laughs> I wanted to do the logos. So what I did is I actually created an, an org ref code inside of Yellowfin. Uh, for those of you who have used Yellowfin, org ref codes allow you an easy way to customize the look and the feel and uh, also do lots of different things, image substitution, uh, fonts, etc. in an org ref code, which really is amazing. So what I did is I, I took my little eyedropper out and I grabbed the correct color combinations out of those logos and added those into the charts there. So uh, we'll talk a little later how that was done when we go kind of behind the scenes. So carry on. Tell me a little bit more about this run pass scramble. So we can see they're both very heavy passing teams. What I want to know was, is this what was designed? Or did both of these teams spend their money to make this the team the way it was? Or is this something that just kind of came together? Interesting. Okay, so now I'm looking at the team salary against the cap for 2016, right? Is that what you're showing me here? Yeah, so each each position is divided into whether it's on offense or defense. And then those are grouped into their salary is grouped by that. 
And what did, what did you find? So I'm seeing some balance on the Patriots side, not so much on the Falcons. So clearly both of these teams prefer to spend money on their offense. No, high-powered known offenses, 53% of the Patriots' money went to its offense. $132,000 uh, million, excuse me, 130000 <laughs> Yeah, that's that's just the bill for the drinks in exactly. the Patriot locker room, $132,000. I got you. So they're spending uh, fairly balanced on that, but focusing on the offensive side of the ball with $132 million. Exactly, whereas the Falcons, 62% of their money wow. went to offense. Yeah, so clearly they're going to say, hey, look, we're, we're going to just put points up on the board and beat you that way. Exactly. And we can look at, we start looking at where exactly they spent this money. Top two players for the Falcons, quarterback, wide receiver, both big names. Wow. 38, 39 million between the two. Matt Ryan's making 23 million against the cap this year. Insane. What the? (laughs) (laughs) Holy cow. Look at that's 10 million more than Brady. And so if I understand your chart, right, what you're saying is if you're going to spend all that money, 37 plus 38 million plus 39 million plus on your top two offensive players what does that do to the rest of your um staff i mean what does that do with the rest of your lineup exactly so i went and i grouped all of the salaries into groups using our group data function and we can see our under 500,000 500,000 to a million all the way up to above 12 million. So above 12 million, those are your stars. So this yeah. is, we can see. So this is our group data function inside of the data tab in building a report. And you created those groupings and said, all right, let me sum all the players d- that hit into those groups, mm-hmm. their salary. So we can see those 39 million on above 12 million. That leaves very little. So zero players were in the eight to 12 million. One was six to eight. Only three were in four to six. We compare ah, that to the Patriots. Interesting. One was eight to 10, four, And then six, they had 11 players in that range. So what you're saying then is uh, from the Atlanta side of the ball, they spent a ton of money on their top two players. And that leaves a little less, less cap space to spend on those veterans, on the fill in those free agents and down the road. That's when they fill their roster out with the two to $4 million. And what they're missing out on here is guys like Rob Gronkowski. This guy's a big name star, very productive only seven million. Yeah, it costs you seven, which is criminal, right? He when he comes time to renegotiate his deal, he's going to get a huge I amount. Think of all money. of them are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So l- let's talk about Gronk. So he's Gronk's making six million. What what amazes me is that Tom Brady makes yeah top money, but they're also spending a heck of a lot of money spread out around uh, among lots of different players. And when you look at so some of you may not be aware I'm also a volunteer high school football coach. That's one of my avocations. I love to coach football at the high school level. We don't pay our players 13 million to play. I just <laughs> I just want to throw that out, right? But what what I see here uh, from Bill Belichick as a coach, I say ah, he has balanced out a lot of players around his salary cap. Look at Nay Solder there. He's their number two, and he's a left tackle. And Marcus Cannon, I think he played right tackle too. He spent some money on his linemen to protect that uh, Tom Brady, to protect that resource. The other thing I wanted to show you, Nathan, um, so I went through here and I actually added in, I wanted to have a link to the bio of each one of these players. So inside of Yellowfin, when you create a report, you can actually create a, a link to uh, store a URL and actually create a link so you can pull up a bio of somebody. So that's kind of what I did. Uh, and I'll show you a little later how I did that in inside, but very easy to do to click on a bio. Uh, that's reading a link from the database and then launching that um, into another window there. All right, so let's get back onto it. Um, so I see where we spent our money. Uh, what kind of results does that buy you? Spending 23 million on Matt Ryan, 13 million on Tom Brady. Did we get our money's worth out of seeing these two guys in Super Bowl Sunday? So I wanted to grab the most general stats I could again to compare these two quarterbacks. You know, Matt Ryan had an MVP season. I want to see what does an MVP season look like? Yeah, it looks like 5,000 yards. <laughs> 9.3 yards per attempt. Yeah. 38 yeah. touchdowns. Uh, what what amazes me, and, and again, your, your analysis here is great, is about being such a pass-heavy offense, and he only has seven picks on the year. That's amazing. To amazing. Me. Out of 550 attempts, that is very, very good. So looking at Tom Brady, not an MVP season, nonetheless, almost guaranteed to be going in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, he's a great quarterback anyway. And and I think to your point earlier, he missed four games at the first of the season. Yeah, so we can adjust these stats accordingly. But still, yeah. 8.2 yards per attempt, 
67% completion. He's a little bit lower in every category than Matt Ryan. Is. Now that combined 37 million with a capital N, <laughs> 37 million. Uh, it doesn't mean a whole lot if you don't have people to throw to. Exactly. So that was the next thing I wanted to look at was who are the top targets for this team? Who are these quarterbacks like to hit? And we can see both of these quarterbacks have their favorite receiver. So this is play by play catches per game for their favorite targets. So we can see on the Patriot side, Julian Edelman targeted 9.9 .9 times per game, catches the ball 6.1 at 61% catch yeah. rate, 11.3 yards per catch. Yeah, well, and he kind of grew into that role over the season too because with Gronk out, uh, a lot more throws are coming his way. But that's still fantastic numbers for it him. It is. When we look at Julio Jones on the other side, 9.2 targets per game, catches six of those for 17 yards 17 yards so that's that's not necessarily yards after carry that's where the pass came which is amazing so i i'm pulling up julio jones's numbers for the actual um for the actual super bowl and he had four receptions 87 yards wow on those four receptions 22 23 yards per catch oh wow so he he's playing above his 2016 number as far as catches and yards per catch he was having a great game i don't know if you saw that one catch that he got yeah oh it was legit wasn't it that was amazing you can't defend him any better than that oh, and he pulls defense. that down uh, what i'm what i'm interested to know though is why isn't his catch percentage higher i was wondering that as well so you mentioned that you're a high school football coach why do you think that is well I, yeah so i for me, again, being able to coach an MVP, <laughs> you're not awesome. Having, yeah, have money team. <laughs> but I, I think that uh, Julio Jones is uh, Matt Ryan's bailout guy. I mean, when he's in trouble, he's just going to lob it up there and say, "Okay, Julio, you go be great and grab this." Ball. Maybe not all those passes. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you can put that all on him because you know he's going to catch anything remotely close to him, and some that are not remotely close to him. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think that number is is reflective of of that. Uh, Sanu, of course, is just money, right? You throw it at him, bam, he's right on. 73% catch rate. Even Devontae Freeman not catching that many passes, but 83%. But he's money every time. Yeah, that's a great These are great These stat. are some very quality. And one thing interesting to point out is the how much Gronkowski hurt, how much the Patriots were hurt by not having Yeah, Gronkowski. 21 yards per catch for Gronk in those first eight games. Man, that's a lot of offense to pick up when he sits on the bench. Exactly. And it looks like the load went to Julian Edelman in that case. The next thing I really wanted to look at – was how this evolves. We know they like to throw the pass, but is this something that happens every down or like what, where do they prefer to get these passes? Okay. So what you're showing me now is my horizontal axis. So this is a combination chart. Uh, one of the many chart types available in Yellowfin. Very easy to see two dissimilar data points. Uh, so this is by quarter, right? That's my horizontal. Yes. First or no, by down. First down, second down, third down, fourth down. And then what's the line? What's what's the line? Average yards. That's the average yards on that down. So we gotcha. can see that the Falcons, 7.3 yards wow, per, on, on first, the first down. down. That's amazing. So again. That's practically another first down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You love that as a high school coach too because now I, I can get three yards on the ground, right? If I If my first down is really – the key to winning a football game is having great first down performance. So I guess a question in that regard. So yeah, you're three yards away. Then why does your pass percentage go up? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So uh, I think it's Matt Ryan, right? I mean, that, that's your, you've guy. got him. Why not? Yeah. Why wouldn't you uh, now Atlanta has good running backs as well. I'm not, I'm not saying that, but you've got an MVP in the backfield. Of course, you're going to throw the ball on second down. As that well. makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I'd go for that. Show, show me the Patriots number now. So uh, third down, Interesting. So third down is a tough play, and, and we're actually seeing the average yards go up, right? Almost like, a whole yard more on third yeah. down than first so that, down. That makes sense to me because, again, think about it. Typically, a third down is you may be struggling for yardage, and so you may be throwing the ball a heck of a lot more and needing to make up more yards. Uh, from comparing both teams, I can see, though, that um, – the Patriots are definitely more effective for passing yards on third down versus Matt Ryan. So what's Patriots are averaging what for their third down uh, passes? Almost 70% completion with, with a, um, a 6.8 yards per, care, uh, per catch, whereas Atlanta's almost only about five yards per catch on the third down. So clearly I think that's the Tom Brady factor there, right? He makes it work on third down when he absolutely has to have a first down.
Yeah, that's impressive. And I think we saw a little bit, a bit of that in the game. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now this next chart that you put together, I looked at, what were you trying to accomplish here? So I, I'm, I'm very interested to see how you did formations in this, uh, in this. So section. I didn't really know what I was looking at here. I'm not very attuned in football, but I saw under center and 600, 700 plays being run from under center. I didn't know what that meant, but it looked very interesting. <laughs> it's so a maybe trend, you right? Tell me yeah, more there's about a trend this. there somewhere. So under center, of course, uh, this is the great argument between the college game and the pro game. Uh, court, for quarterbacks in particular. When you're under center, the quarterback lines up directly under center, takes a direct snap. Uh, shotgun, of course, he's three to five yards back and, and takes the snap that way. Under center, of course, is the pro game. They like it because they want that downhill running game where uh, they can do a play action, freeze those inside linebackers, force those guys to play honest and so forth. Whereas in, in the shotgun, it's more of a, you know, a, uh, what we call a read option, you know, where they're going either outside or they're going, um, you know, on an end around or something along those lines. And uh, what we've seen is this debate continues on between the pro game and the college game. Uh, you've had some very highly rated college prospects who got up to the pro game and it was a challenge for them being under center, right? The game is so quick and they're right up close, uh, which is interesting to me. But uh, going back to your numbers here, certainly in these two quarterbacks, under center, very comfortable. They're running most of their offense from those uh, from those uh, formations, and it seemed to be very per, uh, very effective in that lineup. Interesting. So another thing that stuck out to me from this graph was this no huddle number. The Falcons tend to run no huddle a lot more. At 87% completion, five yeah. touchdowns, 8.38 yards. That seems to be something they're good at. Yeah, and I I didn't run I didn't watch a lot of the Atlanta's games this year, but once they got you on your heels, they were coming right at you. And so that no huddle is uh, what's amazing to in, in that stat is that 87% completion, right? It's a hurry up. It's get up to the line. Let's jam the ball down your throat and five touchdowns out of no huddle. That's amazing. So it's working. Yeah. They're, they're pushing you hard. Uh, I call that full press basketball, right? It's full court ba basketball. Is yeah. Right there. Uh, but in the football game, man, they're just coming right at you and throwing, uh, throwing the ball. So Nathan, you got two gunslingers on each side. Uh, what's their favorite pass? I mean, what what are they? Where are they putting the ball on the field? So again, I went back to the play by play data for this one. So I created tree maps, basically represent where on the field these quarterbacks like to throw to. Yeah, tree map, uh, one of the map types inside of Yellowfin, and I'm looking at it from the quarterback's perspective downfield, right? Yep. Uh, okay, I got you. So to the short left, to the short right, I got. Take me through this uh, tree map you've got. So easy. Again, we can see that these are very similar quarterbacks. Matt Ryan tends to prefer the short right with 33% of the passes going there, whereas Tom Brady prefers short left with almost 33% going there. And, you know, that's a tough throw, right? Because uh, uh, Brady's a right-hander, so he's got to come across his body. He's thrown to the left. Interesting. So a lot of targets. Uh, the green is telling me that more of their per passes are coming to those areas. By substantial. By substantial. Okay, I got you. And uh, what notices, uh, what kind of shows up here is I don't see a lot of deep middle out of um, Tom Brady. What what happened here? We look at both short middle and deep middle. 76% of completion rate on short middle, 75%. Those are very high. That's well above his 70% average. Whereas Tom Brady is only 60% up the deep middle. 68% up the short middle. Yeah, I got an explanation. That's that's obviously personnel, right? That's Gronkowski where he's normal. That's Gronk. Yeah, that's where he's missed. He goes across the middle. He's a big guy. He doesn't mind going head-to-head -head with those safeties. Uh, and on the Atlanta side of the ball, that's Julio Jones, right? I mean, he's he's deep middle. He's going to attack that safety. He's going right after it. So That's all one person right there. Yeah, okay. I think you what, what to make that meaningful is take, take out Gronkowski. Gronkowski's numbers and take out Julio Jones numbers and see what still shows. Do you think up. we're going to see a different graph next year for the Patriots? Oh, uh, maybe uh, we'll see. We'll <laughs> see what happens for sure. I think it'll be green in all boxes and green in everybody's pocket. I think that's what that's going to be like next year. So I wanted to look at how this goes by quarter. So I got a little bit of the theory going when we were looking at the. Sum. Yeah. So line charts here. Let me. So my horizontal axis is first period, sec, uh, first quarter, second quarter, third, fourth quarter, right? Quarters there. Uh huh. And then you're giving me quarterback performance on the line. So I'm looking at the major stats. I'm looking at how much, what percentage of their total yards 
they get in what quarter, what percentage of their total touchdowns come in with each quarter. So we could see 36% of the Patriots. And this touchdowns. is from 2016, right? This is 2016, this is 2016 regular season. All right. So we're setting the, this is the baseline, right? This is what, how they perform during the season heading into Sunday's big game. I gotcha. We can see across the board. I mean, Matt Ryan had a great season, 72% average. He averaged 70% Crazy. across all quarters pretty consistently. The only thing I notice here is that the fourth quarter, all the Falcons lines are heading down. They kind of tail off. Now, again, I got a theory for this. I, I think it's because they were so flipping far ahead. In those games. <laughs> it's all blowouts. They're, they're in the back just kind of sitting around eating hot dogs with the fans in that fourth <laughs> quarter, you know, by the time that runs around. But amazing and 70% in that uh, some completion percentage rate. Amazing. Certainly two of the top quarterbacks that we were going to see. Oh, you look at these graphs. Every one of these graphs, these guys are very similar. Yeah, they're, they're tough teams. So we got the right teams in the game. So now let's talk about the game itself. Show right. me, did these teams perform the way that we expected that they were going to perform in the game from the numbers, from the stats standpoint? In a sense, you know, I think what we really saw was the tale of two halves here. I think we saw the Falcons doing exactly what the Falcons were supposed to do in the first half. And then the Patriots doing above and beyond what the Patriots were supposed to do in the yeah, second half. Not only what they were supposed to do, but above what anybody ever had done in the history of the game. I mean, they came back from record. farther. Yeah, Wasn't it, it 10 points was the record before this? Yeah, they shattered that. In fact, one of our colleagues uh, put together an infographic that we're, we'll share with this podcast, talking about all those records that fell to Brady and all of those things. Uh, just amazing performance. And he did it all, all inside of of Yellowfin, and, and it's a really cool oh, very infographic. Cool. So take me then through the story of two halves. So we're looking at these two teams comparing their major statistics across both halves. We can really see here that the Patriots, every single one of their second half stats was better in the wow. first. Rush yards, 57 versus 35. Pass so yards. blue is the first half. Green is the second half. Falcons Correct. on top. Patriots underneath. Yeah, I can see some problems with the Falcons up above there. They didn't have very productive third quarter. Not at all. <laughs> you look at how many passes they actually threw, and that's very few. That's actually – that's. 22 24 yeah interesting so part of that is if you remember back through the game they spent almost an hour on the sidelines before the atlanta um, falcons got back on the field to start their offense what this shows to me is that the patriots outpaced their production numbers for the second half and the falcons didn't am i reading that right one thing that stands out to me here is the rush yards the F falcons have substantially more rush yards almost than the average over the whole season. Yeah, I wondered what half. was going on. That first half, they were lighting up the Patriot defense on the on the ground. That was amazing to me. And I kind of wonder, well, why didn't they keep doing that? You know, why didn't that keep happening? You know, part of it, I think, might have been the surprise. You know, both of these teams were known to be passes. Both of them come in expecting a lot of passes. And all of a sudden, Atlanta's run game is on early. Yeah. So, Nathan, this is the chart that I'm really looking forward to because I know that you spent uh, some time on this and put together and used some of our advanced calculations to put together this chart. I did. I thought this was the perfect opportunity to use our chart functions variance. So in, in when you created a chart, this is a line chart, you used our variance function that's built into Yellowfin 7.3 in order to to plot and and what you're comparing if i understand correctly is how does 2016 matt ryan match up against quarterback matt ryan in the super bowl exactly so the same data we saw when comparing these qbs directly we're looking at completion percentage across the entire season compared to completion percentage in the super bowl alone so we look at that first quarter 30% above his average. His average was 70%. Yeah. That means he threw 100%. Yeah, he's playing quarter. out of his head in quarter one. So if I understand this right, season average is the mean for all those numbers for 2016. And now you're comparing the game performance in the Super Bowl, and he's way above his average in that game. Well above. And we see that continuing into the second quarter. 13.43% yeah. above his mean. <laughs> Yeah, he's having a good game. But by the second quarter, I think he's picking out Super Bowl curtains. I, I think that's exactly <laughs> think so. what he's doing in the second quarter. We can see the trend across this game. Most of this stuff remains pretty consistent. Number of attempts, he threw a pretty consistent number of attempts. Started reverting a little bit more to the pass game than normal. But we can really see the regression to the mean in that completion percentage. Yeah. So by the third quarter, if I understand this right, then by the third quarter, he's cooled off a little bit from his hot, hot start. And but really, he is the MVP, right? I mean, that is an MVP performance. Exactly. For those first These three season averages are MVP average. So even when he's a little bit below the average, 
that's still exceptional. Yeah, that's that's MVP. I got you. Now, what do we learn then from Tom Brady, right? So this is the one that's historical, right? Should, does the do the numbers and everybody keeps talking about how historical Brady's performance was, but do the numbers really bear that out? Looking at this, I think they do a little bit. We can see his struggle in the second quarter here. Yeah. 14% below average. Oh, and he threw that horrible pick. You remember that? The pick? 82 yards return. <laughs> oh, uh, that was a dagger. I right it was to over. Heart. Yeah, right that, then. that was bad. I was actually looking forward to halftime and having Lady Gaga, <laughs> which is a big step for me, let me just say. <laughs> so what, what you're saying then is that this is Brady performing well below what we expected to see for, based on his 2016 numbers. Very much so. This is this is the red zone on that pass direction. This is sixty about 60% completion rate, and that's pretty poor. Then we start seeing third quarter, it starts coming back. Completion percentage is right about the average. Fourth quarter, we're sitting 9% above average, and overtime, it was on fire. Yeah, he was 15, 16% above average. So if I understand this graph correctly, Nathan, what you're showing me is a legendary comeback. Right. I mean, based upon his 2016 numbers versus how he performed in quarters three, four and overtime. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Well, hey, this is this is great information, Nathan. I really appreciate you putting this together. Uh, I'm going to spend some time on it and uh, get a, my head around this and understand why they almost broke my heart. <laughs> I mean, really. Uh, again, my name Tyler McGraw. I'm a consultant here at Yellowfin. You can get a hold of me at Tyler McGraw at Yellowfin bi and. Again, I'm Nathan Schrader. I'm with the Elephant Support staff. So whenever you hit up YF Support Desk, I'm going to That's be you. There. Yeah, and in community. And uh, if you guys have some suggestions on some topics that you'd like us to cover, please let us know. Send me a topic. We'd be happy to crunch some data and gain some insight. And as always, go Pats. Sorry, can I say that? Oh, that's bad, isn't it? <laughs>